Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And, and this, this is the Insider, Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hey, Kat. Hey. Well, I can ask how your weekend went one day out of it, uh, at I least know. Friday night. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, my Saturday was a huge day because it was Pride in the Park and Three Penny was operating That's the, right. the sensory the space thing. that was over there. So we got to operate, like, the chill zone, like, if people needed a break from all the partying that was happening. Yeah. So that was fun, and the kids were awesome. And and yeah, we had a great time there. Lots of joy. So yeah, no, yeah, good time like on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're right. We did actually, we for once got to see each other like in public. Yeah, I had event, a play. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, we both went to the epic quest of the damsels in distress, the damsels playing in distress. for another weekend. And it was so sweet. And it was just yeah. very funny. I had a great time. Kids yeah. in a play. I yeah. mean, you know, where, where are you going to go wrong? Yeah, I mean, yeah <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And like just killing it up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. They were yeah, they, awesome. They, they did great. It was cool. <laughs> a lot. Of, yeah, Junior, he couldn't wait to go because... It, his friend and his uh, sister were in there, the, uh, one of his schoolmates, you know, mm-hmm. classmates and sister and they're good friends. And then all of a sudden he'd be seeing other kids he knew and he was like, hey, that's, you know, know that's our son. That right? like, that is... Well, yeah, they're in the play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the fun of going to see a community theater show. You're like, I know that person. And I yeah. know that, per- that person's like my physical therapist and this person's like my, it, my dentist and this person I went to school with. And yeah, it's actually yeah. almost as entertaining as the play itself sometimes. Yeah, just these people <laughs> who are playing and playing yeah. the parts. Yeah, it, it was good though. That was well done and it was was fun and yeah that's what friday got started and then yeah saturday and sunday it was just uh what did we do did you <laughs> exactly. chill yeah chill yeah, yeah. i finally chill mm-hmm. because we're doing our play you know the pirate which we'll mm-hmm. talk about here soon that's too but we're doing well. that mm-hmm. lady pirates of captain brie and so this is like um yeah this is this is that first week before the show tape so we tape on monday morning so tonight on all the way through to this week it's going to be rehearsals mm-hmm. and Dress rehearsals and yeah. all that. Heck Everything week. down. Get, yeah, 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 heck week. That's heck where we're going to call it. Yeah. Heck week for radio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. an understatement. Definitely, definitely. Sure so, thing. yeah. So that was it. Hope everybody got out there and had some fun themselves this weekend. And uh, yeah, like I said, we got a couple plays coming up and all kinds of stuff. And we'll get at that in a minute. But first, we got to thank Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, you just go to kciw.org. And speaking of the epic adventure to play, you know, we've got the lady who, okay, director, producer, uh, what, you did the yes. whole nine yards, Tiffany? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I didn't use your last name, Tiffany. Uh, Van Maren. Okay, it's Tiffany Van Maren. We got her in the house here, going to tell us about this play. Yeah, so what basically is this play about? Yeah, the play is um, a quest of four damsels in distress that are um, trying to find their way out of the forest and back home through the murky swamp. And they encounter, you know, the bad guys and the good guys and annoying villagers that are hilarious. Yes. (laughs) It was that funny, yes. (laughs) That was a good one. Yes, it was. So this is a take on on like fairy tale tropes then mm-hmm. is is what this play is really mm-hmm. about. And yeah, what's it been like working with the kids? Like yeah. there's a lot of new actors in this. A lot of new actors. I get kind of emotional about it because um, I've been working with Brookings Harbor Community Theater for a long time. Mm-hmm. Worked with a lot of kids over the years. And this is a, like a new bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. I'd only worked with two of them before out of the whole cast of 15. Oh. So mm-hmm. it's really neat to see their growth from the beginning when I had to teach them like with the... Um, stage direction like the um mm-hmm. on the script was and not to say that part out loud to them performing that show so beautifully on stage so yeah. it get it's pretty cool and i just i can see fast forward to the teen actors and then the adult actors and that's where it all starts so mm-hmm. yeah pretty you, cool you got to get them hooked early mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's where like the most passionate people come from mm-hmm. awesome that mm-hmm. that the hct's doing that mm-hmm. yeah. Well, hey, so there's another weekend coming up on this show. Why don't you tell people when it is, where it is, and uh, how much tickets are? Yeah, absolutely. The show is at the Chetco Grange. It's on um, Friday, June 7th at 7 o'clock, Saturday, June 8th at 7 o'clock, and Sunday, June 9th at our 12 o'clock matinee and our last show before we close. 
Uh, yeah, check Hoke Range. And the tickets are $15 for adults and $7 for youth 12 and under. Okay. And if I heard that right, that's a noon matinee on uh, Tw- 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. I heard a 12 o'clock from you. So Sorry. Okay. Thank yeah, you for clarifying that. Yeah. Thank you for fixing that. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. So 2 o'clock if you want to catch her that matinee on yeah. Sunday. Thank All right. You. That's fun times, too, there. I'm telling you. Now, so uh, um, the Brookings Arbor Community Theater, they're going to be doing more kids' productions like that here in the near future. And we're planning something in the fall, um, okay. but I haven't nailed down exactly what I want to do. I'm a thinking family because some of, a lot of the new families that joined this production have parents and adults that are interested in participating as well. So. Yeah, well, my grandson wants to be a part of it. Now his oh, buddies were all in there, and he said he goes. Bob, I want to do a play now, too. And I'm like, oh, well, next time it comes along. But yeah, okay. Nice. Well, we used to do them really frequently, and I do enjoy being a part of it. But I got to say, um, one of the neatest things about this show, besides the new actors, is the fact that so many of the families really contributed to putting the production together. And that makes it a lot more, you know, practical, sustainable thing for, you know, for me to be doing. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, yeah. 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 Theater yeah. is a team sport for sure. For a team sport. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll make sure and be watching for them auditions for the next show. You're going yeah, to come up you. in the fall, definitely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, thanks, Steph, for coming on here. Do we get all the questions out there? We want? Yeah. yeah. The where, the when, <laughs> the what, the how. Yeah. yeah I think so one more have... weekend coming up. That's it. One more weekend. Okay. Beautiful. Yep. So there you go. And you can double your pleasure, double your fun. Man. <laughs> this next weekend, we got all kinds of stuff going pirate on. Pirate shows yeah, and fairy pirate. tales. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's great. Mm-hmm. Super. All right. Well, thanks for coming on board there, Tiffany. We'll be watching for more and get out there and watch that show. It's good times. Yeah, it was a nice setup, too. I got to tell you, it was really nice. Thank you. So thank you. It's indeedy. All right. All right. That was cool. Yeah, that was a fun play. It really was a fun play. We had such a great time. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was funny. Good script. Good kids. Like just all the energy. So, yeah. 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 And it was a quick one, one, too. Between the 15 minute break. It was a tight 90 minutes. Yeah. At least. Really. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah, It was. Yeah. Boom. Bam. It It was beautiful. Had some fun. and left. Yeah. It was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get this music schedule on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look at June here. First, over at the Travel Oregon Welcome Center, music starting at 2 o'clock there. On the 8th, they're going to have John Cannell in on ukulele. On the 23rd, Cisco playing guitar. And then on the 29th, Danielle Duran and Nathan Stone. That's a vocalist and guitar duo. Yes, indeed. And then Cisco, he'll be playing on the 15th, 22nd, and 29th at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. On the 23rd, he'll be at the Travel Oregon Welcome Center, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And on the 26th, he'll be at the Checkco Activity Center, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then over at the Betty Green Event Center at the Elk Valley Casino, music there starting at 8 o'clock. On the 8th, they have Skin and Leonard. And then on the 15th, <laughs> Seaforth. And then on the 29th, a comedian, Lindsay Glazer. And then over at their Warriors Bar and Grill on the 7th and 8th, they're going to have Steve Berg. On the 14th and 15th, Hannah Paysinger. On the 21st and 22nd, Jesse Mead. And on the 28th and 29th, they're going to have Steve Nelson. Yep, and then Bloodline, they'll be playing on the 14th at the Inateca at 8.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. And on the 22nd, they'll be at Oxenfree, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. And just let you know out there, anybody out there, they're looking for a drummer. So there we go. So, All right, yeah. yeah. They're looking Take for a drummer. Take drummers. All right. And then Mike Powell is going to be playing on the 21st at Checo Brewing Co. Music there running from 6 to 8. Yep, and then Disturbing the Peace will be playing on the 21st at Inateca at 8 p.m. And then... P.A. and T. Roy are going to be playing on the 7th at Kuhn Tai. Music there going from 6 to 8. And then on the 14th, we're going to see them at Misty Mountain Brewing from 6 to 8. Right. And Lon Goddard, he's having fun in England with Claire right now. But he'll be back on the 21st playing at Misty Mountain Brewing from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on the 26th, he'll be at the Kuhn Tai 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then the Italian guys are also playing at Kuhn Tai. That's on the 13th from 6 to 8 Yep, and the Mighty Steelheads will be playing on the 7th at Inateca, 7.30. On the 15th, there'll be a Big Daddy dance party at the Grange, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then on the 29th, there'll be a Port of Pints, 7.30 p.m. All right, and we have a full lineup here for the Inateca in Crescent City. On the 7th, it's going to be the Mighty Steelheads playing at 7.30. On the 8th, it's going to be Jezra, that's rock acoustic. On the 14th, Bloodline at 8.30. On the 15th, a karaoke night at 8. On the 21st, they're going to have Disturbing the Peace at 8 o'clock. On the 22nd, a new group, <laughs> Dumpster Puppies. Dumpster Puppies. <laughs> <laughs> playing at 8 o'clock. On the 28th, The Way Out's at 8. And then on the 29th, they're going to have Stephanie Latori and the Reverbs playing at 8. Well, I was laughing at that one when I got this music schedule the other day. Oh, that <laughs> it was funny. Sad. 
<laughs> the dumpster puppies. I'm like, okay. Oh, Lord. All right. Somebody's getting creative. All right. Well, <laughs> let's get away from the music schedule and into some special and weekly events from the Checo Library in Brookings. Yeah. For their weekly events on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., they have story time. That's featuring stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children. And then on Saturdays at 2 o'clock, they're having a new creative writing class with Blake Allwood. This is a free weekly class on the creative writing process. And then on Fridays at 4 p.m., they have Hora del Cuento. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children, all led in Spanish. All library-led programs and events are free to attend, whether or not you have a library card. For more information, you can check out their online events calendar via checkcolibrary.org. You can follow them for live updates from Facebook or give them a call at 541-469-7738. Hey, Brigands Harbor Community Theater, we just had Tiffany on, is presenting the epic quest of the damsels in distress. This says at the Checo Grange. And they've got 7th, 8th, and 9th. Friday, Saturday, it's at 7 p.m. On Sunday, it's 2 p.m. It's hard being a girl, especially in a fairy tale land where everyone expects you to be a damsel in distress. Well, these four young, young ladies are not having it. The story opens with Isadora, who doesn't like seeming helpless after being abandoned in the forest by her father. She much prefers feeling strong and self-sufficient, especially once she pulls an ancient sword from a stone. Isadora soon meets Beatrice, a lady-in-waiting who honestly finds life in the castle quite boring. Winifred joins the spirited pair next, having always lived alone in the forest, concocting potions and practicing spells. The trio is joined by the notorious Masked Maven, a young woman with many secrets, seeking excitement. The foursome journey on a comical adventure through a fairy tale land of magic and monsters, royal fanfare, and fairies as they prove they can aptly find their own way through the world, strong and independent. Along the way, they encountered angry villagers, arrogant princes, mischievous fairies, and even a dragon, too. I mean, what else are you going to expect? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loads of tongue in cheek humor add spirit to this fast paced comedy with four female leads and a simple single set. Uh, it's 15 for adults, $7 for children. Tickets are available at Wright's Custom Framing at brownpapertickets.com. And for info, you can call Tiffany at 707-218-4323. All right. And now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Hey, yeah, here are a few quotes from actor Stan Laurel from the duo Laurel and Hardy. He was born June 16th, 1890. He said, I had a dream that I was awake. And I woke up to find myself asleep. <laughs> he says, humor is the truth. Wit is an exaggeration of the truth. And he goes, you can lead a horse to water, but a pencil must be led. And last but not least, hey, if any of you cry at my funeral, I'll never speak to you again. <coughs> yeah, that's right. I hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Stan Laurel with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. That's yes, uh, right. Uh, uh, Cry at my funeral. Ah, uh, we love a good pun in our Oh, quotes. yeah. It's good, it's good. All right. Hey, we have plays coming up this weekend, but if you're interested in being in a play, Three Penny Theater Co. is announcing open auditions for the comedy Sylvia by A.R. Gurney. They're seeking three to five adults in a variety of roles for this howlingly funny modern comedy. And auditions are going to happen at the Checo Library's large meeting room. That's at 405 Alder Street in Brookings. That's going to be Wednesday, June 5th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. And what's Sylvia about? Well, Greg is a restless, empty nester, tired of his job in finance, looking for meaning in his life. Sylvia is an exuberant labradoodle, astray in Central Park, looking for a new home. When they meet, it is love at first sight. But his wife, Kate, a busy rising star in the public school system, is looking forward to some independence now that the kids are gone and is less than thrilled by the clever and coquettish canine who slobbers, sits on her couch and distracts Greg from their marriage. Sylvia exerts such a charismatic pull that Kate's friends are appalled. The marriage counselor advocates divorce and even Greg's new dog owner friend warns him of the splintering effect a dog can have on the relationship between husband and wife. It's only when Greg is prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice that Kate is able to see Sylvia not as a threat, but as a new member of the family. A.R. Gurney's Sylvia is a smart, silly, sophisticated, and occasionally salty comedy about relationships, nature, and growing older. Hmm. Hey, Checo Pelican Playhouse, located at 1240 Checo Avenue, is presenting, that's right, the Lady Pirates of Captain Bree. This is going to be happening this next weekend, all the way through the 16th. Friday and Saturday showings are 7.30, and on Sunday is 2 p.m. Gangway, the Pirates of the Caribbean, here come the Lady Pirates of Captain Bree. When his crew jumps ship 
Upon sighting the pirates in the distance, Captain Jennings is left with a makeshift crew of motley prisoners and Fergus, a sailor who can't swim, to protect his wealthy passengers, the Prescotts, from the inevitable attack. As the lady pirates take over the defenseless Kayla May, you're in for swashbuckling musical comedy with a host of hysterical characters on deck and a spectacular Bill Frank Wark score, along with Captain Bree, hearty crew of mean and nasty mates, and a couple of new recruits in training who keep forgetting to be rough and tough. You'll find the haughty Professor Buildwell and pretentious Madame Prescott constantly battling for special treatment and respect. Ha! From the pirates. Samuel Prescott masquerading his girl to avoid being shark bait, and Julia Prescott bursting with desire to join the lady pirates. Much to her aunt's dismay. And after the pirates send Thomas the cabin boy out to sea with a ransom note demanding gold from the British in exchange for the Prescott's lives, they amuse themselves by auctioning off the male prisoners to do their dirty work and showing Julia the ropes of pirating. But what is in store when Thomas returns with the British fleet, set on hanging the pirates for their deeds? Madame Prescott and Bidwell are equally set on seeing Captain Jennings hang for his defenseless approach to the Lady Pirates. Both your cast and your audience will love the swashbuckling ending as the two captains work together to save their crews from the British. Tickets are $15 for adults, $7 for students. For info, you can call 541-469-1857. Now, the one thing I didn't have is if they're available at rights or anything like that, but I'm I would imagine they were, you know, and stuff like that, but I don't have it written down here, so I have no idea. All your guess is as good as mine. So. <laughs> and, I'm the, and I'm in the dad gumpy thing. I play the old pirate. So there we go. I get to announce it in and take it out. I got the prologue and the epilogue. That's, yeah. Um, there's, there's, so. <laughs> Very <funny. laughs> Good times. All right. Hey, even more coming your way this weekend. The Lighthouse Repertory Theater, based in Crescent City, is presenting Nonsense. This is happening on the 7th and 8th at 7 p.m., and then a Sunday matinee on the 9th at 2 p.m., and it says tickets are $15. Nonsense is a hilarious spoof about the misadventures of five nuns trying to manage a fundraiser. Sadly, the rest of the sisterhood died from botulism after eating vichoisi prepared by Sister Julia, child of God. Thus, the remaining nuns, ballet-loving Sister Leo, streetwise Sister Robert Ann, befuddled Sister Mary Amnesia, the Mother Superior Sister Regina, and Mistress of the Novices Sister Mary Hubert, stage a talent show in order to raise the money to bury their dearly departed. With catchy songs and irreverent comedy, Nonsense is sure to keep audiences rolling with laughter. This show is perfect for a small cast of women with an excellent comedy chops. It's a great addition to any theater season. No notes about where this is taking place, but beer, wine, soft drinks, and theater food will be available. And hey, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right, good day, cat. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history. For your knowledge, pleasure. Did you know that during World War II, German Field Marshal Rommel accidentally toured a British hospital on the wrong side of the lines? <laughs> it's true, and here's the story. There was a story that Rommel and his captured British command of vehicle in the desert. They came across a large tented British field hospital, and he told his driver to let him out. Well, he entered the tent, talked to the British doctors, walked through the tent, and then at the other end, re-entered his vehicle and drove off. Well, during the African campaign in World War II, German Field Marshal Rommel toured a frontline military hospital with some of his staff. It was filled with wounded soldiers from both the German and the British armies. And the German soldiers looked particularly surprised to see their commander there. And after a short tour, Rommel came to the realization that the English-speaking doctor showing him around was not a POW as he had thought, but on active duty in the British Army, which currently controlled the hospital. Well, the only reason Rommel hadn't been arrested was that the doctor mistook him for a Polish officer. Rommel and his staff excused themselves and quietly slipped out the door before anybody realized what had actually happened. Huh. I wonder if when he drove off, he shouted, See you later, Hosen! I hope you enjoyed this week's Bit of Weird History with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. <laughs> That's crazy. (laughs) You're just sitting there and all of a sudden you're like, hey, you know what? I don't think we're supposed to be here. Right. <laughs> we're, t- we're on the wrong side of the tracks right we're now. Better take it yeah. like, on Oh my yeah, gosh. Right. <laughs> and then just to kind of like do the mm-hmm. walk out, you know, kind of slowly walk out, get right, your car and take off like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Jeez, oh my <laughs> God. All right. We've got another Del Norte County event happening here coming up soon. 
It's the DNATL Pride 2024, Wild About Pride, The Nature of Belonging. So this event is happening on the 15th of June at 664H Street in Crescent City. So starting things off at 245, they're going to have a parade and pet show contest. And then from 3 to 6 p.m., it's going to be a festival with vendors and fun. There's also going to be 6 to 9 p.m. performances, music, dancing, and even more fun. The mission of DNATL Pride is to strengthen and unite queer community and allies through public events, social gatherings, and educational opportunities. This event seeks to improve the lives of everyone by increasing visibility of the queer community and making Del Norte a safer place for all. If you want to be a sponsor, vendor, performer, or help out in any other way, you can download an application form at dnlgbtq.org. Again, that's dnlgbtq.org. Or you can also send an email to dnlgbtq at gmail.com. Yeah, the Elk Valley Casino is presenting Skin and Leonard on the 8th at 8 p.m., a celebration of Leonard Skinner's legacy, a tribute night that honors an indomitable spirit of Leonard Skinner music. There we go. Alter Ego is presenting Boots and Bling, a daddy-daughter dance at the VFW Post 1381 at 857 H Street in Crescent City. This is on the 8th from 4 to 7 p.m. The annual Daddy-Daughter Dance is back, and the theme for that is Boots and Bling. So admission is 45 bucks for a dad and daughter, plus $10 for each additional daughter. Details, this event is open to the public. Please come dressed in your nicest pair of boots and bling. Girls are invited to bring dad grandpa, uncle, or any other male guest who is special to them. Admission includes catered dinner, beverages, a photo booth, dancing, a DJ, and more. You can get tickets for this in advance at etix.com. Just look for Boots and Bling Daddy Daughter. They say message grams, boutonnieres, and corsages will all be available for purchase closer to the event. Beautiful. Yeah, hey, Elk Valley Casino is presenting Seaforth. This is happening on the 15th at 8 p.m. Are you ready for a night of country pop music? Here's a chance to see Seaforth, the duo from Australia. They're live at Elk Valley Casino. Seaforth will perform their songs like Love That, Everything Falls For You, and Get The Girl, as well as tracks from their latest LP, What I Get For Loving You. Tickets are on sale now for $20 pre-sale in person at the Points Club or $25 online in the day of the event. Doors open at 7 p.m. with the show starting at 8 p.m. Must be 21 or older to attend. All right. And then there's going to be an event called Juneteenth, the Family Reunion. So events for this are happening on Tuesday, June 18th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. On the 18th, there's going to be a free screening of the Black Panther at the Redwood Theater. That's at 621 Checo Avenue in Brookings. And then following up those events on Thursday, June 20th from 4 to 6 p.m., there's going to be African Drumming with Gonsango Music and Dance Company. And also followed up by a Black Organ Pioneers presentation by Carolyn Acker. This is all going to happen at the Checo Library at 405 Alder Street in Brookings. And for more information about Juneteenth Celebration and the South Coast Equity Coalition, which is the primary sponsor for this event, you can visit southcoastequity.org. Yeah, and then uh, Curry Public Library, located at 94341 Third Street on Gold Beach, is presenting Memory Cafe Curry. Memory Cafe Curry will meet the third Wednesday of every month from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. To register for the program, please email memorycafe at cplib.net or call 541-247-7246. A Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include, but are not limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in their same situation. And the memory cafe will be staffed by qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. All right. And then KCIW is continuing their Soapbox series. The Soapbox series gives folks a chance to speak their mind. Again, the show is called the KCIW Soapbox. Basically, KCIW offers two minutes of airtime to anyone who has something to say. There are a few rules, of course. There's no cussing, no slandering, no advertising. But other than that, folks can share what's on their mind, positive or negative. The studio is open every Wednesday from 2 to 3 for people to come in and record. There you go. You got something on your chest? Go ahead and get her out there. Yeah, have a good time. Mm-hmm. Game night at the Whimsical Griffin. This is happening at 615 Checo Avenue by the Redwood Theater. This is Tuesdays and Fridays, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. 
They got Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, board games, and more going on there. Right. And then, of course, Meals on Wheels is ever looking for volunteers. They are in need of volunteer drivers. So their drivers deliver about 75 hot meals daily to folks who can't get to the Checkco Activity Center for the daily meals that are served there. They have a harbor route and a Brookings route. This is a great opportunity for anyone who wants to give back to the community and be a friendly face and deliver a hot meal and a little kindness to local seniors and homebound residents. Whether you're interested in volunteering for just a day, a week, or a month, all volunteers are welcome. And to get involved, you can contact Debbie at 714-423-9797. Very cool. we got time for one more here. The Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America scouting for new troop members. Boys and girls are invited. Troop 32 and Troop 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. Scouts are able to join the troops from 5th grade to age 17. Adults are able to volunteer as long as they're over 21 years old, are able to pass a background check, and willing to spend about an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. They meet at Scout Hall 7 to 8.30 every Monday night except on holidays. You can meet the troops and learn about what the scouts can do for you and your family. Scout Hall 414 is located at 414 Azalea Park Road in Brookings, Oregon. If you want to get a hold of Troop 32, the Scoutmaster Mark Hagman, you call 541-661-2749. And then Troop 4032 is Scoutmaster Rebecca Wilson. Her number is 707-951-3647. Well, that is it. We got the Flying Fickle Freedom of Fate from our producers here and Time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producers, Ray and Tom, for all their great work, making us look and sound good on the radio. Thank you all for tuning into this week's Insider Report. Please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, by going to KCIW.org. And while there, you can check out the live streaming as well. Hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We are signing off, so please support local businesses, keep it real, and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll, we'll see, see you out there. there. Bam! Bam. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.